there's a couple of things that are really worth knowing about uh, involving y is equal to sine x and y is equal to cos x. And they stem back to the graph transformations uh, information that we looked at beforehand. The first thing is looking at y is equal to cos x. Okay, so if I sketch cosine, and instead of my regular sketch here between 0 and 360, let's look at it uh, between um, minus 360 and positive 360, okay? So this is what it looks like on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, it looks like that, okay? So that's minus 360 degrees. And 360 degrees, or you could think of it as um, uh, minus 2 pi and 2 pi. There's minus 180, there's positive 180, okay, going between 1 and minus 1, okay? Now, uh, what can you see from the actual shape of the curve? <clears throat> well, what you should be able to see is that there is a line of symmetry. Okay, there is a line of symmetry in the y-axis. And so, y equals cos of x is a reflection of itself in the y-axis. Okay? Now, if we look back at uh, the information that we looked at with reflections, okay, uh, we didn't spend a whole lot of time on it in the graph transformation section, but um, if you are taking a coordinate... Okay, that's not on the y-axis. So if you take a point, say, here, and this has coordinate, I don't know, minus 3, 7, and you reflect it in the y-axis, then you get a point that now has coordinates 3, 7. Okay, the y-coordinate stays the same, but the x-coordinate uh, changes sign. So effectively... The x coordinate has been replaced with minus x, or vice versa. So, if you are replacing x with minus x when you reflect in the y axis, and cosine doesn't change when it's reflected in the y axis, that means that cosine of x is exactly the same as cosine of minus x. So it doesn't matter whether your value here is negative or not. It will be exactly the same as cosine of x. So this is well worth remembering. Okay? It's a useful little tool okay? uh, when it comes to certain problems. So that's one thing. I mean, this doesn't work with uh, sine x um, because sine x isn't uh, symmetric in uh, the y-axis. Okay, but you will learn about uh, odd functions when you get to um, core three. Okay, and this will come back again then. Um, when so with odd functions, uh, you'll you'll be looking at sine x, but cosine of x um, is even. So that's the first thing I would remember that fact. The second thing links sine x and cos x, okay? So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and sketch cosine and sine on the same graph. So let's draw sine x in blue. I'm going to uh, separate the graph out first. I think that would probably be a good idea. Okay. Um, and... I'm going to make this a little bit easier for myself by putting that in as 1 and that in as minus 1. Okay, so sine x. This looks something like this. I'm kind of trying doing it fairly accurately. So that's y is equal to sine x. And cosine of x always find this one a little bit more tricky. Okay, that's not too bad. So that's y is equal to cosine of x. 
Okay, so what I'll do is I'll get rid of those uh, lines now, dotted lines. Okay, right. So there is a um, fairly adequate sketch of y is equal to sine x and y is equal to cosine of x. This is 90 degrees, that's 180 degrees, that's 270 degrees, and that's 360. Okay, or you could put them into radians if you like. Now, the thing about sine x and cos x is that they are exactly the same shape. They're the same shaped curve, except that one um, has been moved along the x-axis a little bit. So, effectively, they are translations of one another. So, if... For example, you're looking at y is equal to sine x. Okay, so if we take this point, then this point you can see kind of corresponds with that point there. Okay, so if I wanted to write sine x in terms of cosine of x, then to get from cosine of x to sine x, I need to translate it okay by a vector which is going not going up or down in the y axis but it's just going along by 90 degrees and that would be x minus 90 okay so this vector would be 90 0 because we can see that that point is at 90 okay and so we're going from 0 to 90 there so sine x is cos of x minus 90. We could also do it from the point of view of cos x. So co cosine of x, how do we get from cosine of x, or how do we get from sine x, rather, now to cosine of x? Well, to get from sine x, which is the blue line, then we can work backwards the same way. And so we would have x plus 90, okay? Because that would be a translation by the vector minus 90, 0. OK, you could look at it from that point to that point, if you like. So that would be minus 90, 0. So that brings about these two equations. And this is how we can equate uh, sine and cosine together. And we're going to see a problem in the next video that links this information with this information here, okay? So hopefully this kind of sets, uh, sets up the uh, information that we need in order to solve it.